Over the past six games, the Wings have given their fans a lot to cheer about. Five dominant wins, two milestone goals, spectacular saves, and some Philly toughness mixed in. Right now, all they do is win. Waiting in the wings are the Georgia Swarm. What's the buzz around them? Only the league's best scorer in Shane Jackson and the league's leader in assists, Randy Stats. One could say they're the league's bee's knees. The Swarm fly into Philadelphia, ready to sting. We'll see if the wings can swat the pests from the south. It's been a terrific month of January for the Philadelphia Wings and Corey Vitarelli is one of the veterans to reach a milestone this month. His 200th career goal last week came to the Wings as a free agent in the offseason. It's been a big part of the Wings offense so far this year with 19 points contributing from that right side. But at the other end of the floor, Zach Higgins is stealing the show for the Wings. He's the league's best goaltender statistically coming into the weekend and has changed the fortune of this Wings team. A great start through seven games. Gets a little tougher though for the Wings from this point on. Tonight they'll look to avenge one of only two losses so far this season as they take on the Georgia Swarm here at the Wells Fargo Center. Hello everyone and welcome into Wings Lacrosse action here on NBC Sports Philadelphia alongside former Wings captain Scott Gabrielson. I'm Brian Smith. Scott, the Wings focused on defense this summer. They only added one key piece to their offense. That was was Corey Vitarelli and he's ended up being a good pickup yes he has it's been a great pickup for the Philadelphia Wings with Corey Vitarelli coming off a big game last week against New York he had three goals one assist including that milestone 200th goal he's a 10-year veteran a leader on the floor he gets it done look for him to add his point totals tonight on that left hand side Kyle Matisse has been dominant in all aspects of the game this season tonight he focuses a little more on the offense the captain, number 46, Kyle Matisse, the guy they call Moose. He's a do-it-all player, offense, defense, picking corners. He gets it done, loose balls. Look for him everywhere tonight for Paul Beck. As for the Wings and their overall offense, Vitarelli has been uh, one of the key catalysts to it. Ten goals, Kyle Matisse, in addition to the offense, picking up all those loose balls. He's fourth in the league among players who don't really take face-offs, so that has been a key component of what he has brought to this roster this season. On the Georgia Swarm side, they come in with some of the most vaunted offensive players in the National Lacrosse League, and the key to that offense is Shane Jackson. Yes, it's Shane Jackson. He's probably the most underrated player in the league right now. Very smart a backdoor cutter. He scored three goals in every single game this season. He's actually most dangerous when he doesn't have the ball, and actually Lyle Thompson does. And the guy setting up Jackson for all of that offense is one of the game's best players in Lyle Thompson. Yes, he is. He's probably the best player in the world today. He's athletic. He's creative. He makes everyone around him better. His stick skills are magic. So be ready for a treat tonight watching number four, Lyle Thompson. The Georgia Swarm dealt the Wings one of their only losses of the season. We take a look at some of the NLL goal leaders. You see Jackson there at the top. Brett Hickey not available for the Wings tonight. They'll look for some guys to fill those holes. Yep, number four, Callum Crawford. That guy's averaging seven points per game. And then the great Lyle Thompson. So that's the offense the Wings have to deal with, but they'll be confident with Zach Higgins in the net. He has had just a tremendous season so far for Philadelphia. He's really changed their fortunes. They'll look to him to do so again tonight. It's the Wings and the Georgia Swarm coming up here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. The NLL on BR Live and NBC Sports Philadelphia is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. It's college night here at the Wells Fargo Center as the Wings take on the Swarm, and we have a very special guest tonight. Our sideline reporter is Brooklyn Vaughn from Temple University, the lead anchor of Al Sports Update, their student-run production show at Temple University, and she is downstairs with the captain, Kyle Matisse. Thanks, Brian. I'm here with Kyle Matisse. Kyle, the last time you had met with this Georgia team, it was not the outcome that you guys were hoping for. What do you need to change tonight to come out on top? 
Yeah, I think it was game one of the year, right? So uh, now we're kind of the midway point of the year. So lots has changed. Uh, you know, we developed our culture. We've, we've kind of uh, made leaps and bounds throughout uh, each and every game. But, you know, for us tonight is sticking to our game, sticking to our process, sticking to the things that, that we've developed. And, uh, you know, what I think we'll have some success. Absolutely. And as the captain of this team, what did you say to your guys in the locker room? Yeah, I, kind of a very similar message, but stick to the process. We believe in our systems. We've uh, played well on them all year. Uh, I believe our commitment to each person on this team has been outstanding on and off the floor, uh, in the locker room and everywhere. And then just effort and energy. We got a little bit of a slow start last week. So it's those, those three key points is uh, what I said two minutes ago. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Back to you, Brian. Thank you very much, Brooklyn. Now for tonight's inactive report brought to you by BetMGM. Well, it looks like the Georgia Swarm going to sit down a couple transition guys where the wings are going to be at, be without Brett Hickey, Nick Finley, and Kevin Buchanan. Two forwards and a D-man. The, the loss of Hickey is not going to be good. Had a big night last week. Five goals, one assist. Unavailable to the team due to a work commitment this week, so uh, Kyle Matisse is going to shift into a more offensive role than perhaps what he's seen so far this year. We're underway, and Georgia will control off the opening faceoff, and they have a quick opportunity here as Lyle Thompson trying to get around Steph Charbonneau, but he could not do so. Great play by Charbonneau to snuff that out. So Thompson will get things set up for this Georgia Swarm team. Three-game losing streak snapped last week with an overtime win. And the Wings would like to get them back into their losing ways as a quick shot gobbled up by Higgins, his first stop of the game. It is an exciting offense to watch. Great stick handlers, incredible chemistry on offense for Georgia. We'll see how their defense can handle the high-powered offense of Philadelphia. Kevin Crowley is tied with Shane Jackson for the NLL scoring lead coming into this weekend. He feeds it right side for Matt Rambo. Rambo dumps it off to Reardon, moves in and scores! Plays Reardon, gets the wings on the board first. one nothing early on. Beautiful textbook pick and roll between Rambo and Reardon. The comfort, talk about chemistry. These guys are really developing it. Nice pick and roll, little strong hands. Face dodge, picks that far corner. Great goal by Reardon. Look at that foot outside of the crease, reaches around the goalie and jams it in that far corner. Great play by number 10, Reardon. Plays Reardon and Matt Rambo love to run those plays like that. Six on the year now for Reardon. And a great start for Philadelphia. Scott is last time out. These uh, two teams played in the Wings season opener back in December. And Mike Poulin was just unreal in that contest. Really frustrated the Wings, so great for them to get one early. Yes, it is. It was. I mean, you heard Kyle Matisse talk about it, too. It was the first game of the season for the Philadelphia Wings. It's kind of been a different uh, direction they've gone. Georgia, since that win, has been 1-3, and, and the Wings have been 5-1. and one. So the Wings are rolling. The uh, Georgia Swarm's trying to get back on track. Miles Thompson picks up a loose ball, pays the price, but is able to retain possession. Shot shoveled in on Higgins was stopped, and the Wings now will come the other way quickly. They'll slow things down. It's Eric Schuhl back in the lineup after missing the last couple of games. That's part of the rotation of the absence of Brett Hickey and Kyle Matisse moving into the offense, and Eric Schuhl slots in on D. There's a shot from Rambo, whistled wide in the net. Loose ball will be picked up by Georgia. This Swarm team is a veteran team. They've still got 12 guys on this roster that won the NLL title back in 2017. So they have a lot of experience. The Wings, though, have a lot more experience than they did a year ago and are a little bit better equipped to deal with it. Randy Stats working on the left side. Plays one out to Thompson. A shot whistled wide. Long rebound off the end boards. Will be picked up by Jordan Hall, who played for the Wings last year. Long shot in to beat the shot clock, turned aside by Higgins, but Georgia's going to get this loose ball. Excellent job by the Swarm to keep possession. Good work. Great random shot from outside. Hit Hickey, bounced off, new possession. Here's a shot and a goal. And there he is, Shane Jackson getting his first. And you see why he's so dangerous. They just feed him coming across every opportunity they get. Georgia's tied it up. Jackson is so active, always moving. There's that cut across the center, coming right off that wall pick right there. Little cradle and a shot goal. Shane Jackson, his first of the night. 
Jackson with the goal. Zed Williams picks up the assist. Jackson has a hat trick in every game this season. His 18 goals have been evenly spread, three per game over six games, and it's the longest hat trick streak of any NLL player since going back to the 2016 season. Quite impressive looking at the stat sheet. Three across the board for every game, all six games. That's impressive. Another face-off win. Jay Jackson delivers another. Georgia accomplishing that one by just flinging the ball back into their defensive end. They're able to recover. And here is Jackson again working on the right side. Cross for Thompson. They continue to work around left side. Here's a shot just wide of the net. Rebound will be picked up by Isaiah Davis Allen. And the Wings will look to regroup and head up field. We talk about the scratches. And one thing to point out is the Wings are going to go with five offensive players, 10 defensive players, and then Matisse playing two-way. A little bit different than uh, Georgia. They're going to play with seven offensive players and 10 D-men. Here is Matisse on the left wing with seven to shoot. Comes a pass off to Crowley. Trying to make some room as Crowley whistled one wide, and the shot clock will expire. So Georgia with a defensive stand there. And they'll have possession. All tied up at one apiece in the first four minutes or so of this first quarter. Wings of the Georgia Swarm here at the Wells Fargo Center on this Friday evening. Right side, this is Miller. Trying to come up high. He's taken to the turf. But a penalty coming up on Philadelphia for that particular play. As they regain possession, the whistle is blown, and an illegal cross-check is going to put Georgia in a man-up situation. There, there he saw it, Brian, illegal cross-check. Let's take another look at it. Here comes Miller coming in. Isaiah Davis Allen high with his stick up into the throat of, of uh, the Georgia player. That's going to be a penalty. And unfortunately, Wings are on the penalty kill against one of the top power plays in the league. Here's a quick shot and a save made by Higgins. Third best power play in the league, this Georgia Swarm team at 55.6%. Wings have been decent on the penalty kill so far this year, 57.1%. That is sixth in the NLL, but it is a vast improvement over a year ago. The Wings have allowed 14 fewer power play goals to this point in the season than they did last year. That's been a big key to kind of their revitalization this season. Here's Josh Currier working in a shorthanded situation. Gets the shot away, and that's stopped by Mike Pullen. Georgia will pick it up and head up the floor. You talk about the comfort and chemistry of the Georgia Swarm with the Thompsons, Miles, and, and Lyle. Just Randy, Randy Stotts, I mean, just great finishers. Watch them move the ball. Try to find an open man, get the defensive moving, and then get a high percentage shot. Jordan Hall with a bid from up high, stopped by Higgins. The Wings will control that loose ball. The Thompson brothers are two and four on your screen. Miles Thompson wears number two. Lyle Thompson wearing number four. Wings dump it down into the corner just to waste some time. Liam Patton, the former Swarm player, doing a great job. One on four down here, trying to keep this ball out of George's hands. And Liam Patton able to kill off a little bit of extra time there. 25 seconds left to go in the man up situation. 17 to shoot for Georgia as they work it around. Thompson up high to Stats. Skip pass comes back to Stats. A shot, tick save made by Higgins. And the Wings pick up that loose ball. They'll head down the field. That should pretty much eat up the rest of the time on this Georgia power play. Good kill here early on for Philadelphia. Yes, very good penalty kill against a high power, power play of Georgia. Philadelphia going to be all even. Get their offensive set back on the floor. They'll do so with 10 to shoot as Matisse backs a man in. Got it off for Crowley. Thought about the shot, pulled it back. Crowley can't get to the net. Now he'll turn and shoot. And a save made by Pullen. He'll control that rebound. Long outlet pass ahead to midfield. Not quite cleanly caught, but Georgia will maintain possession as Williams Got possession of that outlet pass. Near side now, they work it around for Miller. Miller comes up high, skip pass to Miles Thompson left side. A shot, they score. That was Williams, rather, with the catch on the left side, and he's able to slip one low past Higgins to put Georgia up two to one. Some of the most dangerous shooters in the National Lacrosse League, the Georgia Swarm. Let's look at it. Lord is right in his hands, but a beautiful bounce shot gets. Higgins drop into his knees and it pulls it right up over his shoulder. 
Great goal by Zed Williams, seventh on the season. Virginia graduate, great player in the indoor. Did a nice shot, dropped Higgins to, Higgins to his knees, put in the upper corner. Georgia holding a seven to three shots advantage here in the early going, and now their first lead of the contest after Philadelphia got the first goal. It's 2-1, Trevor Baptiste with a clean face-off win, and he will wait for it. The offense to come out on the floor before depositing it off to Kyle Matisse. Wings will work it around. It's Matt Rambo on the right side. Rambo fed one out, and then a cross pass intended for Courier was knocked down. Breaking the other way comes Georgia. Here's a shot and a save made by Higgins. Big save by Higgins. They actually caught the goal post, I think, as Jordan McIntosh had a great A opportunity. Great knockdown by Brendan Bomber of Georgia. That cross field pass, close one. The wings player runs into a double team on that far side, and that results in a turnover as Georgia transitioning again. This was Matt Dunn on the right side. He'll give it up and leave on the change as Jackson feeds it out high. Roll down left side for Williams. Rolls off a man. Now back to Jackson on the right. Jackson thought about the shot, pulls it free, tried to rip it out in front, a nifty maneuver there. Looking for a teammate, it was Adam Wiedemann at the top of the crease. Missed that though, shot clock violation, and we have a timeout on the floor with 7.09 left in this first quarter. An unfortunate tragedy occurred this past weekend in which Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others lost their lives. Prior to tonight's game, the Wings and Swarm observed a moment of silence in their memory. Our hearts, our hearts go out to the families of the victims. Two one Georgia with the lead here in the first quarter. Well, after this one, the Wings have a couple of weeks off and then a road trip, but they'll return to the Wells Fargo Center on Saturday, February 22nd, to take on the Saskatchewan Rush for eSports Night, powered by Nerd Street Gamers and Army ROTC. Visit WingsLAX.com to score your seats and learn more. Veteran goaltender Mike Poole in his 14th NLL season anchoring this Georgia defense. Wings looking to tie things up as we get back to action with Matt Rambo on the right side. Trying to find a lane to the net. Gets the shot away, but a kick save made by Poole. And the loose ball controlled by the Georgia Swarm. Poole has been solid all season. He really started off the season with as the best goaltender in the league. He's fallen off a little bit, but he's very tough, very hard to beat. What a, a very smart goaltender like another coach on the field, Coach Paul Day says in his scan report about Poole. Stats is slowed by Liam Burns as he moved in for the net. Excellent play by Burns. And now a skip pass and a nice attempt there on the left side. Actually at the side of the net. Take that back. They did give Georgia a fresh 30, so that got a piece of Higgins in front. They continue to battle for this loose ball in the corner. There's... Four Wings players in there with three Swarm players. Finally, it's kicked three to Alex Pace. And he'll move it up the floor. Pace able to dodge a Georgia hit. Would have been kind of a high one if it had connected, but it did not. Over the head check. Check by Lyle Thompson trying to do it. I mean, Georgia is just so active on the floor. They're going to be pressuring offense and defensive end everywhere. Rambo dumped it off to Blaze Reardon, who got the shot away, but it was Stopped by Poulin, and here comes Georgia up the floor in transition. Miles Thompson coming down the right side. Leaves it off for Jordan Hall, the University of Delaware graduate. Going to the net, gets the shot away, and he scores. Unlucky bounce there for Higgins as that one hit the goal post, but then hit the back of the goaltender and rolled over the line. It's 3-1 Swarm. Jordan Hall, the 12-year veteran, seeing an opportunity right underneath. Puts it in his right hand, then brings it back to his left. Sees that far pipe and jams it in the near side. Great effort by the vet, Jordan Hall. Just catches Higgins right in the back of the leg off that bounce. Hall played for the Swarm before he came to Philadelphia. He played for the Old Wings team as well. Chose to go back south in the offseason. You see he's only that's only his sixth goal of the season. However, he's got 22 assists, so he's been sitting back, kind of helping the other guys. 
Right there, he gets on the scoreboard, though, with a goal. He has 11 of those 22 assists on the power play. That's the best in the league. But an even strength goal there by Hall extends the Georgia lead to two. It is three to one. Here's Kyle Matisse on the left side. Skips to Reardon. Now Matt Rambo with it. Gets the shot away and scores. Matt Rambo gets one back for Philadelphia. It is three to two. There he is. There's number one, Matt Rambo, on the scoreboard. Great goal by him. Let's take a look at it. Again, reared in two man. It's not a pick and roll. It's Rambo just coming up strong left hand on the run. Overhand shot. Picks a corner. Bang, goal, Matt Rambo. Bunch of assists last week for Rambo. Three goals, 13 shots against New England. The five assist game against Rochester. He's got nine on the year now, does Rambo, the local product out of Glenside, Pennsylvania. LaSalle College High School, University of Maryland, Tuareton winner. This guy's done it all. What a great player. And he's really adjusting well to this indoor game in his second year. A technical violation on the faceoff will award the ball to the wings. And they have an opportunity to tie things up as we move under five minutes to play in this first quarter. Here's Josh Currier coming around high. Now near side, Crowley all alone, but a great save by Poulin. Excellent work by the Wings, moving that ball around, and they caught Georgia flat-footed. But Poulin with a huge save on Kevin Crowley. Now the Swarm with an opportunity the other way, shot in on net, is gobbled up and held by Higgins. Long outlet pass corralled by Ryan Wagner. He's able to fend off Lyle Thompson before leaving ball ahead and now Rambo is going to control the wings will continue the offensive change you keep your eye on number four most offensive guys go right off the floor once they're on defense Lyle Thompson is checked it's really finding the ball harassing his clearing transition player every time trying to create a turnover before he goes back on offense that was Josh Courier with that pretty behind the back shot attempt that just missed the net now Miles Thompson the other way for the Georgia Swarm. Work around left side, shot in, gobbled up by Higgins, rebound loose near the top of the crease. Higgins trying to pull it back into his crease, and now they'll blow the whistle on the violation, and we'll get a timeout on the floor. With 3.38 left to go in this first quarter, Georgia with the early lead, 3-2. Three two is our score. The Georgia Swarm with the early lead on the Philadelphia Wings as they got the game's first goal. Georgia got a couple more and a good back and forth affair right now with this club. Our Brooklyn Vaughn is downstairs. She is with Wings head coach Paul Day, who's got some familiar faces on the other side. What's going on there, Brooklyn? Thanks, Brian. I'm down here with Philadelphia Wings head coach Paul Day. Paul, what do you see going well for you guys at this point in the game? You know, we're handling the pressure, breaking out pretty good. Uh, they're all dangerous offensively. That's the toughest thing to play against this team. Uh, we are too, so you know what? We only had five shots there for a while, and we talked to our offensive guys. we got to shoot the ball, especially mid-range. we got to shoot the ball. Absolutely. And what exactly are you looking to improve on? What do they need to do to get back on top? Uh, defensively, they're throwing a guy behind the net, so we got to make sure that we're helping each other out. They're getting underneath a little bit, but uh, I think we made some good adjustments. Thanks, Coach. Brian, back to you. Thank you very much, Brooklyn. Paul Day and Ed Como, pretty good friends. Ed Como, the head coach of the Georgia Swarm. Sean Ferris, one of the assistants for Georgia. Worked for Paul Day in Rochester back in the day. It's a small world around here in this coaching fraternity. That it is. That it is. I mean, one of the things Coach Paul Day said, he knew going in that Georgia's going to be all over the, the floor. They are a swarming defense. Pardon the pun, but they are everywhere. They're very active. They're offensive players. Once they turn the ball over, they're still going to four check coming up the floor. Georgia with the opportunity here as we go under three minutes left in this first quarter. They'll work it around on the left side for Williams. Here's Jordan Hall. He'll leave it off for Miller. Zach Miller pushed aside by Wagner. Fed it left side. Lyle Thompson over and a shot at the buzzer is stopped by Higgins as Williams got that last second bit away. A little bit too late had it been a successful one. But great stop by the wings. Great team defense by Charbonneau, Wagner, passing each other off of the switches. Well done. 
Anytime you can hold a, uh, to a shot clock violation is a great thing for a defense. Matt Rambo with a mighty blast turned aside by Poulin. Loose ball in front of the Georgia bench. Finally picked up by the Swarm. They've got a three on one the other way if they hurry. Near side shot. Kick save made Higgins. Rebound is loose. Picked up by Georgia. Tried to get a quick shot back on net but could not quite pull that off. And they will reset back at center. Great stop by Higgins as Georgia had a grand opportunity. On the near side here's Jackson. Nice feed to the left side and another kick saved by Higgins as Thompson found Williams going to the net with the backhanded pass. Quickly, here's Burns the other way. A shot and a goal! Liam Burns in transition. Able to put it home. We're all tied up at three. Liam Burns doing the right thing. All kinds of pressure on him coming down. Jackson does not leave him alone. So Burns just goes straight to the goal, reaches around Poole and just beats him underneath that left goal. Liam Burns' goal, his first of the season. And we're gonna have a challenge on this one as Ed Como has tossed the flag out on the field. So we'll see if this stands up. Burns certainly hopes it does. He was a member of this team back in his early part of his career. He was a practice Georgia squad player on the 2017 championship team. So he still knows a lot of these guys. We'll take a look here at what Ed Como might have seen as uh, the officials move into the penalty box and start taking a look at the official review. Burns is a pure defensive player. This time he's going directly to the goal. You're not gonna see it on that angle. There's the foot, there's the ball in the goal and the foot lands. Oh, well, that might be a bit of an optical illusion. Let's see where this, the ball's gonna hit right before the line. That's not good news for the wings. Watch Liam Burns' left foot, the ball bounces up, foot's still in the air, now it's on the ground, but you can't tell from that angle, Scott, where the ball is in relation to the goal line. Hopefully, yeah, this is the one that'll probably prove it right here. If we can see his foot, which we're not gonna be able to do, but right there you see it bounces over the line. This is going to be a tough one, I think, Scott, for them to overturn. Burns is out of the shot to the bottom of your screen, right underneath the clock. And the question is, did the ball cross the line before Burns' left foot landed in the crease? And all the ball has to do is cross the, the pane right on the, right on the uh, line as if, as if it was a pane of glass as it goes through before his foot hits. It's hard to pick up exactly where the ball is there. You see Burns' foot is still in the air at this point. But they are taking a very close look at this at field level. This challenge is completely in the hands of the officials on the field. There is no war room anywhere or anybody else contributing to this. So they're gonna take a look at every available angle that they have and see what comes of it. But a, uh, a very important one here, Scott, in this East Division, which is going to be a tight battle, I think, uh, with the top three teams in this league, New England, in this division, rather, New England, Philadelphia, and Georgia. We're going to get a decision here as our referee walks out onto the floor. And they do call it a good goal. I would imagine the evidence was probably a little bit inconclusive there, Scott, or they did see something that made it a good goal, but it will stand. Yep, I think the call on the field stands. Ed Cuomo not very pleased with that, but great goal by Liam Burns, his first of the season, a pure defensive player, a guy that's just been aggressive on the floor all day long or all season long. He's a ground ball guy, very smart. He knew that was the right thing to do. With the defender on his back, he just took it straight in, took that shot, nice goal. Well done, Liam Burns. So we're all tied up at three with 140 left in this first quarter and a chase off win for Trevor Baptiste. He's gonna try to get something going here quickly. Gets the shot away and it's wide. His stick might have been checked there at the last second. It goes out of play and it'll be George's ball. Faceoffs are important for Philadelphia to continue to gain possession. Giving the ball back to Georgia can be dangerous. 
shot wide of the net, 10 to shoot still for the Swarm as they get to the loose ball. Jackson thought about the shot, holding it now. Dished it off for Stats, going to the net, behind the back, and it's kept out by Higgins. What an effort by Stats to get that on goal, and an equally great effort by Higgins to keep it out. It was a little bit of a changeup. Highlight play, look at that little around the world shot, but Higgins just gets it. What a great shot by Stotts. Josh Currier at the other end. Not enough for Matt Rambo, dished it out in front, and the shot is stopped by Poulin. Swarm will pick it up with an opportunity to run this clock pretty far down. There's about a five second difference, so they will have to do something with this. They'll get the offense out on the floor and get something set up. Jackson works it over to Lyle Thompson. They'll play catch way up high. Now 10 to shoot as Jackson heads toward the net. Feeds it off. A shot. They score. They set that up, and Zed Williams took the pass from Jackson, buries it low. It's 4-3 Georgia. Jordan Hall again with this pick and roll. Just set it up so patient on offense. Let's look at it, Jackson. Nice little bee sting pick for Hall. Gets it right back, puts pace on his heels. And then Jordan Hall, the veteran, finishes with a nice goal right here. Takes a look at it. Looks like he fakes him high a little bit, shoots it low, sneaks it in. Another goal for Jordan Hall, his second of the night. So Hall, with two quick ones here in this first period, is off to a great start for his Georgia squad. Just 10 seconds left on the clock as the faceoff kicks the ball over by the wings bench. We get a whistle and a timeout, I believe. Let's see what we got. Wings did pick up possession in front of the bench. Paul Day and the referee are communicating right now. We will see what the end, end verdict is here. I didn't see a timeout indication called, but the whistle clearly was blown, so yep, we will see a discussion. Timeout by Day. Even though there's five seconds left, let's get our, our six offensive players on the floor, see if they can get a quick one before the end of the first. Hey, Philly Authentic fans, have you downloaded the My Teams app yet? We get stories, stats, exclusive video, and more right from your phone. Download now and always stay connected to your teams. So the Wings are going to have an opportunity here to run something from the offensive end with five seconds left on the clock in quarter number four. The net is empty at the Wings' end, so they will play the extra attacker. They'll get the ball at midfield. The clock will start at that point. Kevin Crowley picks it up, and he will sprint in. Crowley to his left. Shoot! Save made by Pullen. As Crowley was able to at least get the scoring opportunity on net, and now some pleasantries being exchanged on the end boards after the horn. As Crowley and a couple of Georgia players get into a discussion. That's Joel White in there with the big cat. Crowley and Joel White mixing it up right there. Looks like the ref's going to put them both in the box. 15-10 shot advantage for the Swarm in the first quarter. They've got the 4-3 lead. Very entertaining first 15 minutes. Second quarter is just ahead here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Tomorrow, the NLL Game of the Week moves to Las Vegas as Connor Fields and the Seals host Dylan Ward and the Mammoth at Orleans Arena. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook starting at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time with a special half-hour edition of NLL Game Day Live. 4-3 our score, Georgia Swarm with the lead. Shane Jackson up to his usual trick, Scott. Yes, he is. Well, there's an assist. A little flip there. He's got a goal and assist on the night. Look at that feed across. He's so active all the time. Higgins has been great with some saves. But Jackson is on the board. One of the keys to the game for the Wings is trying to slow him down. But he's got a goal and assist on the night. So the penalties at the end of the first period resulted in a couple of roughing minors. So we are going to play even strength. We always talk about trades in, in dual lacrosse. 
That's a trade of an offensive star in Crowley for Joel Wright, quite a defensive player. Georgia got the better of that one, keeping Crowley off the floor. So Anthony joked him out in an offensive role with Crowley in the box. He'll stay, he will now head to the bench and finish up the change. And the Wings will try to get something going here in the early goings of the second quarter. It's been their best quarter of the season. Here's Matt Rambo, feeds it off, a shot just wide of the net. The loose ball is at the feet of Courier, finally gets it into his stick, but the shot clock expires, so Georgia will take over. Here is Williams taking his time, and he'll dish it off and leave on a change. Swarm will get set up with Stats on the near side. Stats feeds it across, and a save made by Higgins as he gets over and slams the door on the far post. Quick outlet pass knocked down by Wagner, but he'll just hang on and wait for the change to complete. Great save. So many times that's a quick stick that the goalie can't get to that far pipe but Higgins is athletic enough and quick enough to make the save. Vitarelli, a nice speed far side for Courier. His shot was wide, 10 to shoot. Wings do get the ball back. Charbonneau to Matt Rambo, seven to shoot. His shot is blocked, bounces to the near corner, and the Wings will abandon it there and just change up on the defense with the shot clock winding down. Georgia coming the other way. Swarm up the floor, it's Connor Sellers. Working over a wing in the corner as a turnover gives the ball back to Philadelphia. Charbonneau will wait for the change. With Crowley in the box, you've got a little more athletic right side with Courier out there. Courier and Matisse. Corey Vitarelli with a quick catch and shoot through a screen. Poulin never saw that one. And Vitarelli ties things up. It's 4-4. It's all set up by the captain, 46, Kyle Matisse on that right-hand side. Eyes up always, looking, looking. Here he is, sees Vitarelli right there in front. Little bit of room, catches, release. Look at that, low and away off the pipe. Great goal by Corey Vitarelli. Went back across the grain on Poulin there as you saw Poulin try to get quickly to that near post. Matisse taking over down there in that far corner with Brett Hickey not here this weekend, but Vitarelli the beneficiary of the feed from the captain. And we are all tied up once again. 11th goal on the year, 19th 19 total points. Vitarelli's really done well on the offensive side for the Wings, adding a lot of scoring power. Trevor Baptiste with another face-off win, gives the Wings the ball back going the other way. Here is a nice play down low by Matisse. He found a man going to the net. It was dished on goal. That was Courier now in transition. Here comes Georgia, shot, and they score. Pretty transition goal there for the Georgia Swarm as Adam Wiedemann caught the long pass, absorbed a hit, was still able to get it past Higgins, and it's 5-4 Georgia. Wow, Adam Mead, wait a, wait a minute, look at this. What was a one-handed catch over his shoulder? Gets hit as he's going down, pushes it over the shoulder of Higgins, takes the pressure, still has the athletic ability to catch, dive, release, bar down, goal. Wiedemann. Great effort for Adam Wiedemann. A first round pick of this Swarm Club in 2018. Now into his second season. Pure defenseman, that's his second goal of the season to go with uh, an assist, so that's three points for the D-man. That's a huge goal for him. Baptiste was shoved from behind as that loose ball sat at his feet, so that will give Philadelphia possession. Looking to tie things up once again. Far side, it's Crowley trying to work his way to the net. Does so, got the shot away, hit the goal post. And Georgia will get to that loose ball first. White and Crowley out of the box with that goal being scored as their penalty time had expired. So they are once again available to their teams. Here's Georgia working on the right side. It's Thompson figure out in front and they score. Rather that was Jackson with a nice feed to Miller and he tucks it up over the shoulder of Higgins. And we've got our first two goal lead of the game for the Swarm, six to four. Stick skills are so impressive by Georgia. They're always moving. Look at this little pick in front. 
Miller just catches the ball, kind of reaches for it. Look at the pick and roll for number three right here. A little errant pass, but he catches it off side and then bears it to that upper right-hand corner over the shoulder of Higgins. What a beautiful goal by Zach Miller. Fourth of the year for Miller. And the Swarm have a two-goal advantage, six to four. Baptiste with another face-off window and waits with an opportunity to close it as Courier works on the left-hand side. Courier comes around a man, but that was an illegal pick. And that gives the ball to Georgia, and they are in transition, and they score! Quick restart for the Georgia Swarm off that soft whistle, and a tremendous goal off the bench. And who else? Shane Jackson, look at him shooting the bench. The defensive player comes off, he comes on, shoots that bench. White finds him in a full sprint, a little underhand catch, shot, goal. What a beautiful goal, accurate goal by Shane Jackson. So Jackson is second of the game, trying to continue his hat trick streak. He's hat trick streak. You don't use that term very much generally, but uh, that's what he is on. He's got a hat trick in every game this year. Trevor Baptiste trying to round the corner off the faceoff win. But he could not quite get there. Wings will give him some supports as Kyle Matisse takes the pass up high. Incredibly heads up play by Georgia. I mean, they continue just to push that ball up the floor. Good defense leads to offense. Looks like they caught Higgins sleeping on that one. Jackson beat him low. Shot in on goal, stopped by Mike Poulin, and Georgia gets to that loose ball. Swarm will regroup. Yeah, I'm not sure Higgins was quite ready for that play to resume so quickly. One of those very strange situations in box cross where that soft whistle can just get going right away. And that's what happened there to Philadelphia. Here's Ian, Ryan Wagner. Ian Lord with the strong clear, putting the shoulder down, absorbing that hit. Matisse in the right side corner, trying to go around behind the net. He is cut off. One hand on the stick, nine to shoot. Who's a near side, a shot and a save made by Pullen off the stick of Kevin Crowley. Georgia, send it the other way. Nice give and go pass there and a shot in on goal by Jordan McIntosh is gobbled up by Higgins. Steph Charbonneau now off the right side. So far the transition game, Scott, has benefited Georgia. Yes, it has. You see those the stick skills of Georgia, that real give and go, tremendous ability, sticks ability, laser shooting as well. Another save made by Poulin and another opportunity for transition here, but the wings quickly out off the bench, getting the defense there, and that will slow things down. And here's Lyle Thompson on the left side. Thompson, shoots, shoots, hit the crossbar. What a move by Lyle Thompson to just create space out of nothing. He's one of the most accurate shooters, aiming for that corner right over Higgins' shoulder, just hit the crossbar. Jackson looking for the hat trick, stymied by Higgins, but Georgia gets to that loose ball. Now here's Stats. Trying to go to the front of the net. Held off nicely, gets around a pick set by Thompson. Thompson gets that pass back, spin move, goes to the goal and scores. One ball movement by the Georgia Swarm, and Lyle Thompson able to get around his man, dives and puts it low. And the Swarm on a run here, it is eight to four. Well, we said, talked about him in the open, we talked about his athletic ability, creativity, look at that goal. Little inside roll or outside roll. Gets under, dives across, low shot, buries it. What an incredible goal by Lyle Thompson. Foot outside the crease, reaches across, goal. Number four, Thompson. 16 on the year now for Lyle Thompson. And Scott, it really seems like it's the second chance possessions that 
are really benefiting Georgia right now is the Wings winning face-offs. They win another one there, but not getting a lot of second chances after their initial bids. They're not. I mean, Georgia's being aggressive all over the floor, creating fits for Philadelphia. Their offense is dialed in. Here is Courier trying to do a job, and he got it in. Courier with a Wild Thompson imitation. He gets to the line, takes to the air, and he's able to roll it home. And so a big goal there by Courier to quell the momentum. It's 8-5. Courier matches with an acrobatic goal of his own. Look at his face dodge. Then left to right, reaches around, pulling, and puts it in. Beautiful goal, goes one-handed lefty, then reaches completely around, beats him inside. What a beautiful goal by Josh Courier. So the goal from Courier ends the run for Georgia. Wings still with some work to do here, though. It's, there's still plenty of lacrosse let, yet to be played. 8.35 left in the second quarter. But the Georgia Swarm already have 27 shots on the board, Scott. That is an astounding number. I was just going to say the Wings have 15. Georgia has 27. The Wings are going to have to take some risks, take some chances, let it fly a little bit. Tend to shoot, stats, put it toward the net. Blocked nicely, though, by Alex Pace. And now we've got a whistle and a penalty coming up as there's a Swarm player down and a boarding call is coming up here against Philadelphia. Certainly didn't appear to be intentional, but that's just the way it ended up for Philadelphia. They'll be down a man when we come back here in the second quarter. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Wells Fargo Center where the Swarm lead the Wings 8 to 5. I'm here with the Georgia Swarm head coach, Eddie Como. Eddie, it's Jordan, it's Jordan Hall's first game back in Philadelphia. He's having a great night. What is the key to his success? Well, Jordan's, uh, you know, first of all, a great guy, but he works so hard his age to still be playing, and he works so hard, but he never stops on the floor, and that creates opportunities not just for him but for others. Absolutely, and as for the rest of the guys, what does this team need to do to maintain their lead? Well, I think we need to continue to play good defense, push the ball, uh, but we know Philly's got a lot of weapons. They're not going to quit, so uh, it's going to be a long night for us. Thank you, Eddie. Go ahead, Brian, back to you. Thank you very much, Brooklyn. The Georgia Swarm in a man-up situation. Alex Pace in the box for boarding. And so this dangerous Georgia power play getting an opportunity here. They move it around nicely, and they put it home. What great passing there as Lyle Thompson ends up going behind the back with that final pass to Randy Stats, and he tucks it home. For the power play goal, it's 9-5. A thing of beauty, starting with Hall. We talk about the veteran, KG veteran, 12 years. He reaches around his defender and flips it. Look at it. Jordan Hall comes in, face touch, flips it back to Thompson behind his back, and then Stotts just buries it low and away. Beautiful power play goal by the Georgia Swarm. Hard to do much against passing like that. The accuracy in the shooting of Georgia is something else. Randy, Randy Stotts proves it right there. Higgins had a little bit of room below his left hand glove, and Stotts just buried it there for the goal to put Georgia up 9 to 5. Yeah, several of these Georgia players are above 20% shooting percentage, which is a really good number in this particular stat as a bid on net from Crowley gobbled up by Poulin. And another. Change in possession in favor of the Swarm. Georgia trying to get set up with speed. Now they'll slow things down a little bit. Near side, it's Williams. Worked around, comes back. The stats on the near side. Tried to find the corner, missed it just wide. But the rebound is controlled by the Swarm. Stats gets it back. Lost the handle on it. Nice defensive play. Liam Patton and Ryan Wagner there to dispossess him. And here comes Philadelphia. Good double team by Wagner, Patton, well done. It's the kind of stop the Wings need, Scott, to kind of get back into the momentum here. Again, Georgia really taking advantage of the second chance opportunities. Crowley is checked to the floor as he tried to go to the net, loses handle, and here comes Georgia the other way. Nice breakup by Anthony Jokum as he got the stick on the pass. It was a two-on-one developing for the Swarm, but Jokum broke it up. 
One thing you heard Coach Ed Como say is he wants his team to push the ball up the floor. Well, they are doing it quite well. Every time there's a save by Poulin, he's looking up and out and letting the ball fly. And there is a goal for Josh Courier. Caught Poulin by surprise a little bit as Courier was looking past, but then a fire to no-look shot over the shoulder, and it finds its way home. 9-6, Georgia. Talk about accuracy, momentum change right there. Courier steps up, defender slips off, but Curry just buries it in the upper right-hand corner. Time room, shot, bang, goal. Josh Courier, well done. Courier was facing the boards, not facing the net until the last second before he launched that shot. But a very, very well-placed shot for Courier. Two goals and assists, three shots already in this one. And the Wings able to regain possession of another faceoff win. Now a little bit of a collision there between Charbonneau and the referee. And there's a delayed penalty coming up on that stick up around Charbonneau's neck. Wings are going to get the extra attacker out with Higgins trotting to the bench. Here's an opportunity to score! Matt Rambo finds Kevin Crawley up high, and he puts it home. Two in a row for Philadelphia. It's 9-7. Poole looked like he was looking for defensive switches, but Crowley caught him off guard with a big blast from up top. Look at the big cat. Rambo finds him in the middle of the floor. Four defenders around uh, Crowley, but he still buries it. See him set up, takes the shot, beats him right under his arm to that left hand glove, and a goal by Kevin Crowley. Crowley trying to keep pace with Jackson as they came into this game, tied for the league lead in scoring 37 points apiece. Crowley doing it more with assists, Jackson doing it primarily with goals. And Baptiste gets the possession back again for Philadelphia. Pat running away from the check, drops it off to Jokum, and the Wings will get the offense on the floor. Looking to close the gap to one. As Rambo. Takes possession on the right side. Rambo comes up high, still holding. Four to shoot. There's the shot. It was stopped by Poole, and he got a piece of that one. But Georgia picks up the loose ball, and they break quickly the other way. Swarm trying to get set up. It's Joel White on the near side. And now seeing the Wings have their defense out, he'll pull off. Went toward the net, but now he'll leave it off for Stats. Stats right side. Now on the near side from Miles Thompson. Tried to feed it out in front, but that was off the mark, and the Wings are going to get to that loose ball. And we've got a timeout on the floor with 4.54 left to go in this second quarter. It's 9-7, Georgia leading the Wings. <laughs> Bring your team or organization to a Wings game for a one-of-a-kind experience. Groups are eligible for special pricing and exclusive opportunities to be a part of Wings games. Find out more about group tickets and fundraising by calling 215-952-LAX1 or visit wingslax.com. Well, Scott, the Swarm able to open up a lead, but the Wings with three in a row here closed it back up. That's for sure. One thing that's so exciting about a National Lacrosse League game is that the goals come in bunches. And here they come. Josh Curry had a couple there. Then Crowley answers. Just when Georgia tried to pull away, the, the Wings scored three more. And we have a great game here at 9-7. Three in a row for Georgia earlier on in the second. Wings have three of the last four tallies. And this is one thing that, Scott, they don't want this game to just keep creeping away from. That's kind of what happened between these two teams down in suburban Atlanta. And that is something they've got to prevent tonight. Here's Kevin Crowley on the left side, taking a look at things. Got it off to Matt Rambo. Off for Blaze Reardon, a low shot stop by Poulin. And Georgia gobbles up that loose ball. Moving quickly the other way is Jordan McIntosh. Tried to dish a pass off in front for Connor Sellers, but it was just out of his reach, and Higgins is able to gobble that up. Incredibly fast pace of play for both teams. Georgia, though, really pushing up the floor as soon as Poulin makes a save. He's looking for a 20 to 30-yard outlet pass to create the transition and fast break for offense. 
Corey Vitarelli in front for Matisse, and a shot stopped by Poole, and Wings do get to that loose ball. Courier rolled off a man over the shoulder, and it's knocked to the near corner. Courier gets that back, and the Wings are going to settle things down. Pretty exchange there. Didn't result in a shot on goal, but some nice across to see as Rambo got knocked down, tried to get the shot away as he fell to the turf, but it bounced up over the glass and out of play. Yep. Great stick work right there by Philadelphia to catch those passes. Shot. Here's Lyle Thompson. Feeds it back to Stats. Randy Stats back to Thompson. Holding. Holding. Finds a man right side. Put back out in front and they score. Could not tell you how Lyle Thompson found Jordan Hall breaking down the right side there, but he did. Hall flipped it back out in front and it is put home. It's 10-7 Georgia. We talked about the chemistry that this team has between each other and that ball movement is incredible. Look how pretty it is. Jordan Hall, Jackson with a defender draped all over him, catches, releases and shoots. Looks like he's got a foot in the crease. That's what some of the fans are, are challenging here. Let's take a look at it. Paul Day is throwing the red flag, challenging the goal. So if Jackson's goal stands, he would complete the hat trick, but we'll see what happens. The Wings have used a coach's challenge. One thing you don't see very often, certainly in the outdoor game, is the short pass within two or three feet. Look at this little flip pass by Hall, right to Jackson, who's standing right in front of him. Jackson with the incredible stick work to handle it, catch it, shoot it. So you see the ball coming past Higgins, breaks the plane there. Jackson is obscured by Randy Stats in that shot, but you saw his left foot coming up off the turf. Take another look at it here. The left foot is down. And that ball is not in the net as of yet, Scott. Very close. You can see the net start to jump. Foot still down. Here's another look from the overhead. I see a foot on a line and a ball that's not past that post yet. Yep. From that angle right there, if his foot is touching down, has not crossed the plane. And look at the effort by Alex Pace to apply pressure from behind and get him to make that step. If Pace isn't there on the hustle, Jackson gets his foot down outside in the green, and that's a good goal. This is by our amateur opinion <laughs> as we say this. Yeah. They have not made the official decision as of yet, but another lengthy review here in this first half. Our officials tonight are Mark Guardiono, Josh Hiltz, and Brandon Hessen. Luke Racken is our 30-second shot clock operator. we we'll get another look at it here from the midfield vantage point trying to see when his toes actually hit the line you can see his toe is kind of from this angle blocking the gray which would deduce to you that it's on the white and then as this play continued it went right into Higgins or rather Jackson went right into Higgins so definitely a physical effort here from the Wings defense trying to prevent this. Looks like we have reached a decision. So we will get the official announcement on what has transpired. After review, the call on the floor stands as a good goal. Is it conclusive of when the floor touched down, the foot touched down? Wow. Well, you see Paul Day's opinion on that call. I really, I really thought you could tell, Scott, that that foot was on the white in that one angle that we had. Yep. Referee's calling it inconclusive. Couldn't tell when his toe actually touched the, the crease line when the ball went in the net. From that overhead, that overhead look, it looked like he was in, but his toes may not have been down. That's probably what they're, they're inconclusive with. Paul Day, furi furious about the call. Same with Kyle Matisse captain giving him an earful as well. This is the second time this season, Scott, that the Wings have been victimized by an inconclusive review. 
This one stings a little less than the last time. We're gonna As have Philadelphia has already used their timeout, this challenge was inconclusive, so that way we have a two-minute delay game penalty for Philadelphia. Oh, boy. How about that? Yep. So, Georgia will be back in a man-up situation off the Georgia's center dot faceoff. Yes, yeah, got back in the uh, game against New England. Overtime goal scored by Callum Crawford. Seemed likely from the laws of physics that he probably was in the crease, but you could not see in that particular instance where his foot was because of other bodies on the floor blocking the view. So a uh, similar situation in this one for Philadelphia, but they're able to win the faceoff. So they'll start out this shorthanded situation by killing some time. Very important face off of Philadelphia. Baptiste get, gets the win. Philadelphia can burn 30 seconds. Keep this high power power play off the floor of Georgia. Far side, Courier, low shot, skips in on Poole, and he gobbles that up, and there is no rebound. So that took care of the first 35 seconds of the power play situation. Now Georgia will get an opportunity. They're working around, stats to Lyle Thompson. Trying to run around to pick, gets free of his man, dishes it off right side, save made by Higgins. Jordan Hall wide open, but Higgins able to keep it out. Great save by Higgins. You look, it looked like Lyle Thompson had the time and room in front, drew, drew the defenders and then dumped it to Hall for a shot and a big save. By Higgins. That's what makes him so dangerous, though. It seems like he sees this game a second or two ahead of what everybody else sees. And he saw an opportunity to catch the goalie off guard as Rambo with a big blast wide of the net. Shot clock winding down, so the Wings just dump it back into the corner. Georgia gets to it, comes the other way with 30 seconds now left to go in this power play. Stats will get things set up. Thompson goes behind his back just because he can. Now back out the stats. They play catch stats with a shot. Save Higgins. Able to keep it out again. And not a long rebound. It didn't exit the crease, so the wing's able to control. And here comes Burns through center. Burns with two seconds and one left on the power play. Now wings back to full strength as Isaiah Davis Allen is released from the box after serving that delay of game penalty. Courier now feeds it off to Matisse. Matisse maneuvering off to Reardon. Now back to Courier. Near side. Here's a shot from Vitarelli that's stopped by Poulin. Loose ball on the far side, but only one wing there versus a couple of swarm, and George is able to pick it up. Lundgren into play here in the second quarter. Georgia with the three goal lead, 10 to seven. Thompson behind his back. Maneuvering is Williams. Shot away wide. Thompson gets to the loose ball. Now back to the left side for Stats. His shot was stopped by Higgins. Wings will pick it up. They can pretty much play out the quarter from this point with 23 and counting left on the clock. Paul Day's pulling Higgins from the goal. Wings are going to have a six on five opportunity here. Final 11 seconds. Philadelphia looking to go out with a goal. It's Matisse over for Crowley to Matt Rambo. Dished it off for Reardon, but he couldn't catch the pass cleanly. It goes to the corner, and that is going to do it for this second quarter. Coming up on NLL at the half, our Devin Caney sat down with San Diego Seals captain and head coach to find out what role the Merrill family ties play in team chemistry. Highlights and analysis of the first half and a look around the league are all coming up at the half. So the Philadelphia Wings with a big battle on their hands here against this Georgia Swarm team. We've got highlights, analysis, and much more coming up throughout halftime here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Halftime here at the Wells Fargo Center. The Wings and the Georgia Swarm here tonight. Well, brothers Patrick and Brody Merrill spent years playing against each other in the National Lacrosse League. Now, they're the only coached sibling duo in the league. 
Devin Caney sat down with the San Diego Seals captain and head coach to find out what role the Merrill family ties play in team chemistry. I think we just kind of balance each other off really well and, and, and you know we're just honest with each other you know through the good and bad. We get to be able to do it together. We were, we were rivals and we played against each other for a long period of time so it, it's nice to be able to share it not only with each other but our families and our extended families as well. The Seals captain Brody Merrill! With uh, Brody and Pat Merrill. And none other than the future Hall of Famer Brody Merrill. You know you and Patrick have played together before yeah. but before playing for the Seals has he ever been your coach? Uh, yeah it's been more uh, I guess kind of just backyard coach you know in, in some way just older brother you know kind of in, in every sense of the word that way and you know we were maybe a little bit nervous or <laughs> uh, about the dynamic but really you know it hasn't really much our relationship hasn't changed much you can know? I ask why you were nervous about well not nervous I mean you know he's uh, you know in terms of uh, his older brother kind of bossed him around there on the floor but it's not really like that I know it was a tough decision for him to come to San Diego mm -hmm. last year how big of a role did you play in his decision <laughs> he was the first uh, free agent that I picked the phone up and called when when it was time but uh, at the same time, I knew it would be a really tough decision for him and an emotional decision for him. Um, you know, he was the captain of Toronto and, and had a lot of great relationships and a lot of great years there. So um, I, I really didn't try to put any pressure on him. You know, I felt like uh, it would be a neat opportunity for us to do this out here. You mentioned leaving your comfort zone by coming to San Diego. Yeah. Has that benefited you? It, it was tough and it's, it's still like, um, it's just like any tight relationship that you have, right? When you, um, you, you, when you move on, you're kind of always looking back a little bit, but you try to, um, you know, just move forward, right? And it's been it's been an amazing experience here in San Diego for not just not just me, but my family as well. And you know, my wife and three young kids have gotten to experience this, and then to do it, you know, with Patrick, it's been it's been a pretty impactful on us. We we push. We've always kind of pushed each other, right, and kept each other accountable, and we can be very honest with each other. You know, we share. Um, a very uh, similar outlook uh, and perspective on the game in general and values and that sort of thing uh, but we have different personalities right you know I think I'm a little bit more uh, maybe neurotic and, and fiery and and he's more cerebral. What would it mean and, and what do you hope to accomplish you know with your brother in your remaining time playing professional lacrosse? You know as I think I told him kind of right when I decided to, to move forward with this is that you know it's been definitely been involved in the game for a long time and I just think that if, if I were to, to win I, I think it would be pretty special to win alongside of him and that was a, a big driving factor for this decision. I think the, one, the one other thing I would say about Brody is just um, he's got kids right he's got he's got four-year-old boy twins and he's got a daughter that's that's seven so you know to be able to enjoy the experience with them at this stage in his career I think is pretty rare to get them you know for them to be able to see him play and and that sort of thing and I want him to enjoy that that part of, of, of being a veteran player as well because uh, it's very special and not a lot of guys get to get to do that. Catch Brody and Pat Merrill tomorrow in the NLL Game of the Week from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Join Teddy Jenner, Doug Locker, and Devin Caney for live coverage beginning at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time for the special 30-minute edition of NLL Game Day Live. Here in Philadelphia, Wings of the Swarm highlights stats and analysis of our first half. Coming up in just a moment. Ten seven, our halftime score. The Georgia Swarm with the lead over the Philadelphia Wings here at the Wells Fargo Center. Wings trying to stay perfect on their home turf, but they've got some work to do here over the final two quarters. Brian Smith, along with Scott Gabrielson, Brooklyn Vaughn, downstairs with us this evening. Scott, this has been a, a battle of a couple of great goaltenders. We knew it was going to be. Zach Higgins would have liked to have kept a few more of those goals out, but he's a big reason that this game isn't more out of hand for Philadelphia. No doubt, no doubt. They're both playing. Both goaltenders are playing great. Seeing shots from all over the place. Zach Higgins has been seeing shots from outside, inside, all over. He's got 15 saves on 25 shots so far, and just really taking care of some of the, the, the accurate shots that are coming from the swing. Wings already have more goals against Poulin than they did last time these two teams played, but he is still 
an effective netline. Been so solid. The one thing that's been so impressive with him is after he make his, makes a save, he's up and out with an outlet pass. Good defense is creating offense for the Swarm. Here's some of the reason the NLL is such an exciting sport. Just some beautiful athletic prowess. Lyle Thompson, creative magic stick, but Zach Courage, excuse me, Josh Courier answers with another acrobatic goal of his own. And then this beauty power play, backhand behind the back, and it stops, buries it low and away for the Swarm. Georgia with the big advantage in the shots on goal. Again, Higgins with a tremendous first half. and. Uh, Trevor Baptiste, after an off week last week, is uh, again very effective in the faceoff dot, and that has gotten the Wings some possessions they sorely yep, needed. And the power play, one thing that if there's going to be a key to this game would be for Philadelphia to stay out of the penalty box. Right now, they've had uh, three penalties, but they've they've only uh, Georgia's only scored one goal. A couple other games around the National Lacrosse League tonight, and a big weekend of action for the league as Halifax and Toronto are all knotted up in the second quarter. Buffalo with a big lead over Rochester. And a couple of big contests tomorrow, including the New England Black Wolves hosting Vancouver. And then you got Colorado and San Diego in Las Vegas in that marquee matchup for the first ever for the National Lacrosse League. That's the NLL Game of the Week on VR Live as the lacrosse world focuses on Sin City tomorrow. Here in Philadelphia, it's 10-7 Georgia at halftime. The NLL on VR Live and NBC Sports Philadelphia is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Georgia Swarm with the 10-7 halftime lead over the Philadelphia Wings. This week we were able to go down the field level with Steph Charbonneau, who was mic'd up last week against the New York Riptide, and get a really close look at the field level of an NLL game. Ah! Here we go, Patre. Let's go, boys. Quick start! Let's go, baby! You trap, you trap! Hey, I, got, I got you low, I got you low, I got you low! I got digs, I got digs! Coming, coming! You! I'm low, I'm low! I'm here, I'm here! I'm high, I'm high, I'm high! They worked their off and we're getting out work right now. They run. That's all it is. We're getting out work. That's all it is. Back right, Trev. Straight back. You got to move. You got to. I got it, Pacer. Kick there. Hey, where's the help? Jokes. Bring it, bring it, bring it. How the f did he stay up? Holy, run it, Mooser! On that one there, next time, instead of trying to pick it up here with them coming at me, I'm just gonna muck it to the corner. Yeah. Hey, all part of the plan. All part of the plan. Right. Get it. And you see why Steph Charbonneau is so hard to play against. Two goals, three assists in eight games, but 38 loose balls and just a thorn in the side of every team that the Wings go up against. Great athlete, just all over the place. Such a re reliable D-man. He's a, he's a guy that so fast and quick on the back end of the field, pushes up transition, good defense, creates good offense for Steph Charbonneau. If you love the NLL, you'll love all the highlights on our social channels. Get the best goals, saves, and action during the games and during the week on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and NLL.com. Another face-off win for Trevor Baptiste starts the third quarter. Wings down by three, 10 to seven against this Georgia Swarm team that beat them 12 to six back in December. On the 14th, it was the opening game of the season for the Wings. They have gone 
five and one since then. Trying to keep that going here tonight. To pass just a little off the mark results in a turnover and Georgia coming the other way. I mean, one stat that does jump off the page to me is that you know at halftime, Philadelphia was up seven, had won 17 out of 19 faceoffs. So Baptiste was was so impressive with wins that kept basically Georgia's offense off the floor and he, win, he wins one to start the second half. Eight to shoot is the swarm maneuvering. A shot blocked out in front, so the shot clock does not reset. And the swarm just going to dump it in as we get the buzzer and the wings will take over. Scott, last week the wings completely changed their whole makeup from first half to second half. Hopefully they can do it here again tonight. I'm sure there are some choice words said in the locker room. The swarm is, you know, out shooting the wings, which is uncharacteristic for their hard, high-powered offense. This guy's got to take some risks, take some shots. Kevin Crowley with his 11th shot attempt of the game. Bounced off the end wall and it ends up being Georgia coming the other way with it. A shot is blocked by a host of wings in front. Nine to shoot now as it's picked up on the far side by Williams. He dishes it off to Stats, trying to roll off the check of Liam Burns, and he'll just dump it into the corner. So two good defensive stands for the wings here to start out quarter number three. There's that pressure from Georgia in midfield, and right off the bench, a swarm player knocks Matt Rambo to the ground. Rambo never saw that coming. Georgia coming the other way. Just as they rode it up right there, one guy in the front door, guy out the back door, caught Rambo off guard for a great turnover. They work it around. On the far side, it's Lyle Thompson tried to dish it to Miles. He gets the rebound off the corner boards. Miles trying to work away from his man, gets the shot away. It was wide. Loose ball picked up nicely by Wagner, and he's got a lane ahead of him. Here's Ryan Wagner moving in, and now he'll hold off as he saw the defense coming. We'll leave it off for Kevin Crowley to get the offense out. Smart play by Wagner. What a great clear interception. Thought he might have a shot, but did the smart thing. Turn it over to your five-on-five -five offense. Here's Rambo looking to shoot. Hit the goalpost. He beat Poulin, but it caught iron. Wings get the loose ball, and they'll set up again. Looked like a double pipe shot there. And Crowley, as he tried to work his way in on Adam Wiedemann, lost possession. So Georgia now will come up the floor. Let's take a shot. Let's take a look at Rambo's shot. Look at that double poster. Hits the left hand pipe 90 degrees across to the right and then out. It does not get any closer than that as Jordan Hall again flips one behind his back. Ends up into the stick of Williams up high. The shot in on net was stopped by Zach Higgins and he knocks that out of his equipment. Burns now will take it up the floor and leave on the chain. Here's Josh Currier, a couple of goals tonight. Working his way free, got it off to Rambo on the right side. Rambo toward the crease, put it on goal when he stepped on the line. And Georgia will take over. Swarm moving up the floor, no goals as of yet here in quarter number three. The defensive stands of reign supreme. Here's Jackson with the hat trick on the night. Seventh consecutive game, he's got that. Hall tried to feed Thompson going to the net, but he didn't get to the pass. He will get to the loose ball off the boards. Four to shoot. Lyle Thompson looking to fire. Got it to Hall. His shot stopped by Higgins. Fresh 30 on the board. Wings trying to get to the loose ball, and they do. Georgia almost retained possession there, but a good effort by Liam Patton to corral things. Now Patton brings it up the floor. He was looking for a transition opportunity, but he'll slow it down. A great ball move by Lyle Thompson. A little flip inside. Better defense by the wings. Really impressive all the way around. Kyle Matisse weathering the storm. Moves in and got the shot away. The whistle is blown as Matisse landed in the crease while Taupoulin made that save. Georgia moving it up the floor. On the right side, it's Miller. Now Hall. On the left, back to Miller. They work it around. It's Williams to Jackson. 
Dished it off to Hall. He's checked to the floor as the Wings read that play. And Isaiah Davis Allen picks up the loose ball. Nice slide on defense. What a beautiful pass behind the back. What a better slide for the Philadelphia defender. Crowley will set it up. Ends up to Rambo. Now to Courier and back to Crowley as the Wings work it around the horn. Finds the man going to the right side. A shot and a save made by Poulin. Ho oh, ho, Poulin. What a save. Robs the Wings shooter. Ball is up and out of play, and we've got a little bit of pushing and shoving. And we're going to get a Wings penalty after we come back. 10-7 our score, 9-14 left here in this third quarter. Hey Flyers fans, stay connected to your team 24-7 with NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com and the My Teams app. Flyers back in action tonight off their bye week in Pittsburgh. They trail the Penguins 3 to 2. They'll back here at the Wells Fargo Center tomorrow night against the Colorado Avalanche. The turf, though, down tonight here in South Philly. And Liam Patton's in the box. Power play coming up for Georgia. Josh Courier, a great night. Kerr's been part of the offense big time here for the Philadelphia Wings. A couple of great goals to keep him in. And right before we went to break, you saw Liam Patton hit Miles Thompson from behind. I think Lyle Thompson, who kind of took a little bit of a dive, and he got called for a penalty. Georgia on the power play. Terrific save by Higgins off of Miles Thompson after some nice stick work by the Georgia Swarm. And the Wings will control down near the restraining line. Alex Pace got to that loose ball, and Rambo out now for Philadelphia, dishes it off. And Courier. Will work on the left side by himself. Far side, Rambo's shot was blocked right off the stick. And Georgia picks that up. They're coming the other way. Near side pass. Jackson able to corral it, but he couldn't shoot off the catch. And so he'll wait along the right wing boards for the offense to come back out. Minute 10 left to go in the penalty to Patton. And now Hall's pass is knocked away nicely by Jokum and a delayed penalty coming up on Georgia. What an effort by Anthony Jokum, not only to break up that dump in attempt, but draw a penalty at the same time. And that's going to even things up here for 55 seconds. Yep, Jokum anticipated that pass, went out a little, little late, delayed. Great effort by Jokum. And then a slash right in the head. That's the penalty, that stick to the helmet by Jackson. And so he will go to the box, and that will even things up. We'll play four on four for now 50 seconds, then the Wings will get an abbreviated power play, barring further incident. Here's Matt Rambo trying to work his way away from a defender. Dished it off to Crowley. Cross pass. The shot was blocked off the stick of Vitarelli. And Georgia gets to that loose ball. Swarm will get set up with 27 seconds left in the four on four play. Four, four side. Four on four is often dangerous because there's so much more room on the floor to work with them. And there's that further incident that we thought might happen as Ryan Wagner is going to get an illegal cross checking penalty for removing the helmet from Zed Williams. Philadelphia penalty number 94, two minutes, illegal cross check. And again, an unfortunate uh, circumstance here is Wagner just coming in trying to play hard, but Williams ducks at the last second. Yep, coming in high. Just got him under the chin, popped that helmet off. Yeah, that, that, that shaft of the stick just rolled up the back of Williams a little bit there, and that results in the head contact. So, four on three at the moment. We don't see this very often. Georgia working it in tight. Philadelphia, though, trying to disrupt things as best they can. Now four on four as Courier comes out, or rather Patton comes out of the box. Here's a nice dish off shot. Save made by Higgins. It hit the goal post and then came to his back. He's able to swat it away before it rolls over the line. Boy dodged the bullet right there. Shot right on top of Higgins. Looks like he reached behind his back to swipe that away. 
Beautiful effort there, Crowley and Courier, but Poulin makes a better save. As Courier set the pick that freed Crowley and then rolled off it right out in front, got the pass from Crowley, but Poulin up to the task. Here's Hall maneuvering in, dishes it off. Save made by Higgins again. As Miller with the big blast stopped by the netminder. Georgia gets a man back in 10 seconds, and they are going to have power play time for about 40 seconds. One of the keys that would have brought up to the, to the beginning of the game is, to, is for the wings to stay out of the penalty box. They do not want this successful and a really deadly power play on the floor. And Jackson out of the box was all by himself in the wings, and Higgins made the great save. Yeah, we can hear Jackson yelling up here. Wings didn't catch him. But Higgins robs him. See the juke there, but Higgins followed him all the way to the right post. Now here's Courier looking for a top corner. Missed that wide. Wings are going to get back to this, but it's over and back. They will defend the loose ball as Matisse is there to make sure nothing goes awry. Wagner now released from the box. We're back to five on five action. Here's a shot. Locked down in front by Wagner. Wings trying to break out quickly the other way. This is Patton moving in, shoots, save, pull in, rebound rolls past the goalpost. He's able to smother that and move it out. Smart play to push that ball up the floor. Successful penalty kill, kill by Philadelphia. We've played 10 minutes now without a goal here in this third quarter. Georgia trying to change that. Ball pinballs within the reach of Higgins. He's trying to pull it free. He finally will get to that one. It has been a defensive third quarter between these two clubs. Here's Kevin Crowley. Trying to come up front. Dishes it off. Rambo works it off for Reardon. Back to Crowley. Shot scores! Kevin Crowley gets the wings on the board here in the third quarter, pulls them within two, it's 10 to eight. Great motion offense by the Philadelphia Wings, just moving that ball around. Reardon finds Crowley on the run. The big cat takes the shot on the run, a little bouncer, Pullen trying to set up. Crowley likes that low shot under his glove, and he finds it, buries it for the goal. Wings start off the scoring in the second half. Scott, it feels like they need to get Poulin moving like that. You can see he didn't quite have his feet set. But Crowley with his second tonight, 15th of the year, able to take advantage of that circumstance and pull the wings back within two. Yep, caught the ball on the run, released it on the run, just beat Poulin under that hand. Beautiful goal by Kevin Crowley. Baptiste wins another one back to Liam Patton. And now Alex Pace trying to get away from the swarm defense get the Wings an opportunity to set up. They will do so now. Here's Kyle Matisse. Left wing low. Carries it back out. Got the Crowley who picked it up off the rebound. There's a wing down on the floor. That's Reardon. Ball bounces to the end boards. Reardon is up now trying to get back to the bench. Looks like he took something up high. He does get to the bench now. and Georgia sets up at the other end. No penalty call either. Looks like something referees may have missed. Here is Jackson. Shot is blocked. Chugging after it is Matisse. He's run off by Jackson. Doesn't get to that loose ball. Now they'll follow it to the far boards. Georgia will pick it up there, but their shot clock expired as they still have possession of that one. And now we've got a timeout on the floor with 3.35 left to go in the third quarter. 10-8 Georgia. Tomorrow, the NLL Game of the Week moves to Las Vegas as Connor Fields and the Seals host Dylan Ward and the Mammoth at Orleans Arena. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook starting at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time with a special half-hour edition of NLL Game Day Live. A goaltending clinic, Scott, here in this third quarter. Yes, it has been. Even with pressure in front of, look at this save right there. Poulin just robbing Vitarelli. It looks like a dunk, but he took it away. And also Higgins on the other side, eating up a lot of these shots. 
back and forth. Poole and Higgins save, save. Poole and Higgins. Great job by both goaltenders. Again, Poulin was uh, really stingy in the first two games. He only allowed eight goals in Georgia's first two games of the season. Things turned from there. He was not able to continue that, as you would imagine. That's uh, pretty hard to sustain something like that. But uh, he is showing why he is still able to play in his 14th year in this league. Yep, he's like a coach on the floor. He's always talking. He's always telling his defenders where to be, when to switch. He's a great veteran goaltender. Oh, a nice speed attempt there, looking for Crowley was Blaze Reardon, who's back, or rather that was Corey Vitarelli, excuse me, with a nice behind the back pass, but Crowley couldn't quite get there. Reardon again appeared to take something up high there toward the, uh, toward that last break we had. He doesn't seem to be in worse for wear. Here is a break for Anthony Jokum. He's got one man to beat coming off the bench, and he will roll off of that one. As, a, an effective change there by Georgia allowed them to snuff that out. Jokum with a great pickup going the other way. Pulls it out, smart play. Here comes Matt Rambo. Tried to dish to Reardon, but that was blocked. And Georgia quickly up the floor. They hold and shoot, and a save made by Higgins. That was off the stick of Wiedemann. Tried to catch Higgins by surprise with some fake work there, but Higgins able to get low on that. Chad Tutton, 44 for Georgia, just snags that pass right out of the air. Great defensive play. Here is Kevin Crowley, rolls off a pick. Right side, shot just wide of the net. Wings control the rebound. Still, though, low on the shot clock, seven to shoot. Here's Crowley, winds, fires, save made by Pullen, and he snaps up that rebound out of midair. Georgia will take over. Coming up in the final couple of minutes here in this third quarter. Wings have the only goal of the third quarter. 10 to 8 is our score. As Miller works it around up high. Far side, a ball bounces free, and the Wings have it going the other way. Great slide by Ian Lord. Here's Patton with a shot. Save made by Poulin. This time there is a rebound. Loose ball on the floor. Patton trying to get a stick on top of it but can't quite keep it away from the Georgia defense. Watch all the action from around the National Lacrosse League this season on VR Live. Choose an annual, monthly, or per game pass. For more information, visit nll.com slash VR Live, and you'll get to see a lot of action like this as these two teams now starting to get a little bit chippy. Randy Stats talking to the entire wings bench as Patton is down on his knees. Stats being escorted to the box and Patton being tended to. We'll see what comes of this. As both players were trying to sub off the floor, they got caught up right at the bench. Oh, there you go. Stats trying to do so. Oh, man. A little right cross hits Patton, not even ready for it. Yeah, I don't know if there was something right before where that shot started that precipitated that, but Stats caught Patton right on the chin and helmet or not that's going to stun you. Looked like Patton was just trying to walk off the floor and stats gave him a little chop. Georgia Penley, two minutes for roughing, two minutes for slashing, five minutes rough. Good okay call. Scott so you're going to have to tell us about this combination that we were we saw a call for two for roughing two for slashing five for roughing. The slash is going to get the two minutes, but it's the it's the the extra right cross that catches Patton while he's has, has both of his hands down that draws the major. So it's just one two and one five for that punch to the jaw, and the Wings are going to have a power play. Hey, Wings fans, the Wings will be off for the next couple of weeks. Then they're going to hit the road for a pair. Next time they're home is our next telecast. Saturday, February 22nd against the Saskatchewan Rush. Coverage begins at 7 over on NBC Sports Philadelphia and on NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com. Both players are going to go into the box. They're going to put Patton in the box first for a little slash beforehand. Then he had Stotts with a slash and then that right cross. 
So that's where we got the second roughing call. Georgia Smith penalty, number 83, Randy Scott. Two minutes for roughing, two minutes for slashing, and five minutes for roughing. So the end result of this is going to be a wings power play for an extended amount of time. There's seven minutes on the board right now for Randy's stats. So the wings have an opportunity here to really close this gap down 10 to eight in the waning minutes of this third quarter. Huge opportunity here for Philadelphia down on the, or on the power play for seven minutes. Good first effort there. Courier stopped by Poulin, though, and taken away by Philadelphia. Caught sleeping there was Joel White, and he was dispossessed. Wings are right back on the attack. Wings have to kick it into a second gear right now, trying to get a goal. 40 seconds left in this third period to see if they get a goal before it ends. Kyle Matisse up top on this power play. Maneuvering it around, got down right side. Tried to feed a man back door, behind the back shot. Goes up over the glass and out of play. It'll be Philadelphia ball with 26 seconds left on the game clock in the third quarter. Here's Matisse, plays it right side. Vinarelli shot, save made. Tried to catch Poulin sleeping there, but Poulin didn't really make a save, it hit his leg. And now Georgia coming out. With an opportunity to run down the clock, just five seconds left. Long shot, bounces in on Higgins, he'll tip it aside, and that is gonna do it for this third quarter. But the Philadelphia Wings are still gonna have an extended amount of power play time when they come out for quarter number four with 5.44 still left on that penalty clock. Pretty stingy third quarter as the goaltenders ruled the roost. Wings got the only goal. They trail by two entering the final 15 minutes here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Georgia leads 10-8 as we head into the fourth quarter tonight here at the Wells Fargo Center. If you're a college student, military member, or first responder, the Wings have special ticket programs for you and other groups all season long. Check out wingslax.com to learn more and score your tickets now. Some pretty offense here in Scott in this third quarter as Kevin Crowley with the only goal thanks to some tremendous goaltending from these two teams. Picking corners, outside shots by Crowley. Two great goals there for the Big Cat. Crowley came into this game tied with Shane Jackson for the league lead in points at 37. He's got four tonight, two goals, two assists to get the 41. Jackson out dueling him just a little bit to this point, but still 15 minutes of hockey, or cross left to be played and 544 of it is going to be power play time. This is the kind of stuff we saw in this third quarter. Just great ball movement. Look at Courier doing whatever he can, trying to get that shot behind his back, takes the hit. And look at that talent behind his back and just incredible arm save by Poulin. Just straight out reaction save there from Poulin. Because there's no way he saw that coming. Courier with an exceptional skill set. Some thrilling goals this year by Courier. Higgins has been stout in the net as well. Poulin, seasoned veteran, really a great goaltending show for both teams. Fourth quarter, here's where you earn your keep. Wings down by, by two, Baptiste at the faceoff dot. Baptiste able to pry it free and the Wings are gonna get to it. They've got five minutes and change left to go on this power play time from late in the third quarter. They are down by two. Entering the final period, trying to keep their perfect record at home alive here tonight at the Wells Fargo Center. Can't tell you how important it is right now for the Wings to score, and there they do! He can tell his grandkids that that was Pick's top corner, where the Wings don't care how it got over the line. Kyle Matisse squeaks one through Mike Poulin, and the Wings capitalize, pull within one. Look at the captain finding a little sliver of room between four defenders. What a great catch and handle. Little fake gets pulling moving and buries it low and away. What a beautiful goal by Kyle Matisse. Scott, I actually assumed that that ball had been checked out of his stick, but you saw the stick work there to keep it in. 
and get that shot away. What a great power play it was needed, and now this guy needs to continue to do what he's been doing, winning face-offs. He's been dominant. If he can control the ball, the wings go back on the offense and the power play, and Matisse, Baptiste does his job. He picks it right back up. Now that goal by Matisse was scored during the minor, so that resets the clock to five minutes, and now we play the major, and the wings can score three times on this major without a release from the box. So we'll see what they can do here. Down by one, 10 to nine. A shot blocked in front. It's loose and rolls into the crease, which will allow Georgia to pick it up. The Swarm will be able to eat up some time here. Come up on 415 left in the power play. 15 to shoot now for the Swarm. I wouldn't expect them to just sit back and burn clock. Normally the wings, they go on the offense. Wings have just taken a penalty that's going to chip away at this power play time. In front, Alex Pace got a stick up on a Swarm player. Coach Paul Day not very happy with that. It's actually Jokum. Penalty here. Two minutes, illegal cross check. Pace was in the vicinity, but they're going to get Jokum on the penalty. So illegal cross check is the call. So that means for the next two minutes, we're going to play two minutes illegal cross check. Even strength, four on four. Here's Lyle Thompson trying to get away from Charbonneau. Gets the pass away. Now on the near side. It's Williams working with it. Shot stopped by Higgins. Loose ball bounces to the corner. And a fierce battle ensuing as the teams try to come away with this loose ball. All important at this point. And Philadelphia will pull it out of there and head up the floor. Ryan Wagner with the loose ball doing his job. Again, four on four here for a minute and 12. Wings are going to get a man back and resume their power play for a couple of minutes. Here's a shot wide of the net, right back to Matisse. Coming to the net, gets the shot away, kick saved by Poulin. Loose ball, Crowley trying to swat it free. Couldn't quite do it. It's moved up the floor for Alex Krepensek. Now he loses the handle, and Pace will come away with that. And a heads up play there by Alex Pace to regain possession. Action packed. I said it earlier, the players really like the 4-4 four and four situation. It spreads the floor out. There's, there's, there's so much room to move once you beat your man. There's great floor space. Matt Rambo tried to go over the shoulder, but Poulin able to get his arm up and keep that out. Four on four lacrosse continuing for another 15 seconds before the wings will go back on the power play. Here's Miles Thompson left side. Thompson rolls around to pick, dishes it off. Lyle Thompson couldn't catch the pass cleanly, and now the Wings will outlet with it as Wagner trying to deal with Lyle Thompson in midfield. He's got to get over that line. He does. He loses his stick, but in the process, hits the ball to Charbonneau. Relentless, relentless D by Lyle Thompson. Wagner with a great clear. So the Wings back up a man. The minor has expired, the major has not. Here's Matt Rambo, far side. Skip pass broken up. Vitarelli got to it, but the shot clock expired. And here comes Georgia up the left side. Wings down one, 10 to nine here in the fourth quarter. It's been a terrific matchup between two of these East Division rivals tonight here at the Wells Fargo Center, jockeying for position in the division. Georgia coming into the game three and three. Wings five and two. Georgia trying to get their second win of the year over Philadelphia. Quick shot, gobbled up by Higgins. He looked behind him briefly, but it was under his glove. Minute eight left on the power play as Patton holds it at center. Here we go, here's Kevin Crowley. Getting things set up, bounce pass to Matisse. Now to Matt Rambo, back to Matisse. Has some room, far side. They working around for Crowley. 
the right side. Vitarelli cross pass save made by Poole and he kept that out. Set play trying to move the defense around. Look at the sneak pass right there. Batiste tries to quick stick it in, but Poulin's there with the right elbow. Great save by Poulin. And a violation called on Georgia. Wings get the ball back. They catch a break here. 30 seconds left on the power play. Here's Crowley. Tried to play it down low, but Courier couldn't quite catch the pass. Courier was looking to dunk it in from behind, but he didn't have the ball. And Georgia now is going to be able to perhaps eat up the rest of this power play time. As Stats ready to come out of the box. Georgia just holding possession as time ticks down, and now Stats is out. They have six to shoot at this point due to the swarm. Thompson wanted to find Stats going to the net. He'll dunk it on himself. And we've got a whistle and a timeout on the floor. Nine and a half left to go in this fourth quarter. 10 9, Georgia. Pretty high scoring game in the first half as the teams exchanged a lot of tallies, but it's been stingy here in the second. Wings have the only two goals in the third and fourth quarter. They need one more trying to knot this thing up. It's 10 to nine. Now for our Geico play of the game. Well, your Geico play of the game is delivered by number 46, the captain Kyle Matisse on this beautiful power play cut between two defenders. Incredible stick skills, holds it, scores it, goal. The Geico play of the game. Kyle Matisse being relied on for a little bit more for offense tonight with Brett Hickey unavailable to the wings. He's got a goal and two assists tonight. And definitely one of the reasons the wings have had the, the season that they've had. You know, last week against New York, Scott, he went in the locker room after the halftime, rallied the troops. The Wings were tied 5-5 against the Riptide. Came back out, outscored him 9-1. Yeah, what a great leader. He's a guy that just does it all. You won't want to miss the second annual eSports Night, powered by Nerd Street Gamers and Army ROTC on February 22nd, when the Wings host the Saskatchewan Rush at the Wells Fargo Center for the first time. Visit WingsLAX.com for more information and score your seats today. Nine and a half left to go here in the fourth quarter. Scott Wings need one goal. What's the key for them here in the last half of this last period? Well, you're seeing it right here. It starts with this faceoff and Trevor Baptiste winning the ball, gaining possession, and letting Philadelphia put their offensive firepower on the floor. Starting with a faceoff at center because the last whistle, I believe, was inadvertent. So. They get an extra draw here, the Wings will take it, but of all things, Georgia wins this one. So normally where that would be an advantage for the Wings to have that extra face off, the Swarm are able to capitalize. And they'll have possession. We are back to full strength after that lengthy stretch of power play time for the Wings. They did get one goal on it. But unable to pull even, they'll have to do so at even strength, at least for the time being. Here's Lyle Thompson working his magic. Down in front, save made by Higgins. He slammed the door on Williams. Wow, what a save by Higgins. Lyle Thompson drew all the attention, passed the ball back. Williams open right in front, try to reach around, but Higgins made the save. They tried to find Crowley going to the net. Courier was there and couldn't quite connect on that pass. So Georgia coming the other way. Off the bench, a shot and a stop made by Higgins. As Jackson, I believe, came off with speed and got a great opportunity. They really have. Those were two key opportunities, but Higgins was right there for two big saves. See if the Wings can take advantage of the momentum from their goaltenders. Vitarelli works it on the right side. Over to Crowley. They play it around. On the left side, Courier goes to the net. That was stopped by Poole, and Wings get another possession as the shot clock resets. Here's Crowley, off for Courier. Wings trying to tie. To Blaze Reardon on the right side. Reardon to the far side. Pass to Vitarelli, rolled off the stick. He's got the loose ball, though, back. 10 to shoot, he's being double teamed along the near side. Got it back, he's going to the net. Vitarelli a shot, save made by Poulin. 
Vitarelli made something out of nothing there, but Poulin able to get the save. Two defenders all over Vitarelli on that play. Big save by Poulin. It's kind of like a top gun moment there. Hit the brakes, he'll fly right by as they find a man on the right side, and it stays out. Lyle Thompson gets it back. Shot clock did not reset. Thompson to the right side, a shot stopped by Higgins. Wings in transition, they'll slow it down. Under seven to play here in the fourth quarter. Wings still looking for the equalizer. They have the only two goals of this second half to this point. Higgins has been perfect so far. Here's Matt Rambo, right side, and it's stepped out by Poulin as Courier was there. Here comes Georgia up the floor. Wings have done a better job here in the second half of snuffing out the transition opportunities for this Swarm team. Here is Lyle Thompson cutting through spaces he wouldn't think he could get through. They continue to maneuver Georgia. A shot bounces wide of the net up into the netting and the Wings will take over. A lot of high percentage shots by Georgia. A lot of movement by the defense, but great saves by Higgins once more. Kevin Crowley possesses as the Wings get the rest of the offense out. They will work it around, try to get set up as Matt Rambo runs down to the right side. Rambo off the screen, looking to shoot. He scores! Matt Rambo finds that top corner, and he's tied it up. It's 10-10. Matt Rambo answers the bell at a key time to tie this ball game at 10. Take a look at it. Just great individual effort by Matt Rambo. Two-man game, he sets it up. The defenders are all over him. Great pick, double pick, the wall pick by the wings. Rambo sets himself up. Look at that upper left-hand corner. <laughs> Bang! Pastes it. Great goal, Matt Rambo. Defender in his face just sets up and picks that corner. Top shelf, Matt Rambo. Second of the night, ties this ball game up going to be a fantastic finish. Wings win the face off and Charbonneau headed towards the net, shoots it just wide. Georgia looking out in transition now off that rebound. We are all tied up at 10 apiece. We approach five and a half left here in this fourth quarter. Shaping up for a fantastic finish here in Philadelphia tonight. Here's Miles Thompson fires it wide. Rebound picked up by Georgia. Another bit fired wide. Wings will get to that loose ball and they're out quickly the other way. This is Trevor Baptiste. Moving, shooting, just missed wide. Actually, Poulin got a piece of that. They reset the shot clock. Three on one. Poulin answers on the fast break. Huge save. Under five to play here in the fourth. Georgia maneuvering. On the right side, a shot stopped by Higgins. Rebound hit the referee, and the loose ball goes to Steph Charbonneau. He will get into some open floor. Charbonneau trying to get his way past Lyle Thompson to get the center, and he does. Thompson, though, has him tied up. Charbonneau tried to roll it to the men off his bench, but a swarm player got in the way. It bounces around, and the Wings get it back. Lyle Thompson just all over the floor, creating havoc on defense. Almost created the turnover there. Wings with possession and an opportunity to take the lead as Crawley plays it down into the corner. This is Courier. Rolls out high, a shot wide, rebound controlled by Georgia. They'll flip it ahead. Again, moving quickly in transition are the Swarm. But McIntosh is going to slow things up. Off to the left side, this is Stats. Looking, looking, shooting, scores. Randy Stats looked off Higgins and then finally stuck one inside that right post. Georgia regains the lead. It's 11 to 10. One of the first errors on defense by the Wings in this quarter gave Stats a little too much room, and he took it full advantage of it. Thought he was going to slide. Patton kind of dribbles back. Stotts catches it, little fake, dumps it right around. 
Higgins, another look at it, late slide. Look at him shoot the ball around Patton to get that low and away corner. What a beautiful shot by Randy Stotts for his second of the night. Stats came into this game known for his playmaking ability. His 27 assists led the National Lacrosse League coming into the game tonight, but he gets a very important goal there for the Swarm, and they regain the lead. It's 11 to 10. They're coming up now on three and a half minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. And they win a key faceoff right there to put their offense back on the floor. Lyle Thompson with possession. Plays it off to the right side, Jackson. Maneuvering back out to Thompson, looking to shoot. Thompson takes it to the air, and it's stopped by Higgins, kept out. Shot clock does reset, but there's a loose ball on the near side, and we get a whistle. And it's going to be Wings' possession when we come back. A fantastic finish is ahead here at the Wells Fargo Center, 11 to 10, Georgia. Eleven to ten, Georgia with the lead as we head into the final minutes here at the Wells Fargo Center. Scott, it's been Zach Higgins that has shut the door this half for Philadelphia. Really has. Georgia has been all over them. They've had so many high percentage shots right in front of Higgins in this quarter, but Higgins has just absorbed every single one with this quickness. Trying to shoot around him, he's there every time. He's played fantastic. Great saves by Zach Higgins. It took Georgia until 11 minutes into the fourth quarter to finally beat him. Wings tried to keep Shane Jackson from getting another hat trick, unable to do that tonight, but they have an opportunity here to tie things up in the waning moments. Zach Higgins, 32 saves on 43 shots. At the moment, he is on the bench as the Wings put an extra attacker out on the floor. Now, Reardon goes to the bench and Higgins will run back onto the floor. So back to five on five, here's Matt Rambo. To the far side, it's Crowley, a bounce shot, just missed the right post. Rebound controlled by Matisse. Still plenty of time left on the shot clock. Matisse works it into the corner. Here's a shot and a save by Pullen. Long rebound is loose in the corner. They battle for it there, and it's gonna come to Georgia. It's a big ground ball that got away from Philadelphia. And at this point, every time Georgia touches the ball, they'll try to burn some clock. Down under two and a half to play in this fourth quarter. Here's Stats, looking, shooting, scores. Randy Stats just did the same thing again as he looked off like he was gonna pass, and he finds that top corner. And it's back out to a two goal lead for Georgia at 12 to 10. The accuracy of Randy Stotts with this stick. Look at him. There's no, hardly any net, but he knows exactly where he's going to put that ball. And all he does is just ping that up a right hand corner. Defender comes up. Joke him a little late with the slide, but look at that overhand ear to toe release by Stotts. Bang! Hits 90 degree corner for a beautiful goal by Randy Stotts to put Georgia up two. Perhaps the two biggest goals of the game for Georgia as they were having trouble with the wings here in this second half and especially Zach Higgins. But Stats is taking care of that. Wings get the ball on a procedure call. And they will control. Back down to the two goal hole here with just over two minutes to play in the fourth. What kind of magic do the wings have in them here in these final minutes? We'll see. Mr. Magic himself, Matt Rambo, coming off a screen, tried to drop it to Reardon, but it missed the pass, and Georgia will pick that up. And Scott, I think we've just seen a few too many of those passes not quite connect to Philadelphia tonight. That might be their Achilles heel this evening. Yeah, we can't make those kind of mistakes against a team as talented as Georgia. Got to remember these guys were NNL champs back in 2017. They've got a lot of the pieces of that championship puzzle still on the floor. Great Lyle Thompson. Randy Stotts is having a heck of a game tonight, too. Long shot hit the end boards. Goes the other way and over and back. Yeah, you're not going to have it every night by, by any means. It's, uh, some of these chemistry issues. Uh, you know, Brett Hickey not being here tonight. Might have disrupted the chemistry just a little bit. But, you know, unfortunately, those are opportunities that the Wings we're not able to take advantage of. On the near side now off the pretty shot from Vitarelli. We can still control off the rebound. They Come pulled up. Higgins, so it's six on five. 
Matisse will go after a loose ball. Eight to shoot for Philadelphia. Here's Courier, he scores! Josh Courier from some distance beats Poulin. And don't go anywhere yet. Wings back within one with a minute one left in the fourth quarter. It ain't over till it's over. This is the National Lacrosse League, folks. We'll sell you the full seed. You only need the edge. Look at Josh Kerr, sets up from outside, bangs it home. Look at this shot, time, room, release, goal. Wings within one, 12-11. Key face off right here, Brian. It's so important for Philadelphia. Trevor Baptiste is gonna earn his keep right now. He's only lost four all night. And he'll get that in enough time for the Wings to call timeout. Very good move there by Paul Day, and the Swarm are not happy about it. They don't think Baptiste had possession of that. It looks like it's going to be withholding or, or a hold on the faceoff. Referee gave the possession to Philadelphia, and Paul Day immediately called timeout with one minute, 60 seconds even remaining in this ballgame. So we'll see what Paul Day has up his sleeve. And Tracy Kaluski draws something up. Randy Stats is the reason we are at this point. He's been the man. There's a shot from outside wraparound, and then he just picks this corner from, from 15. And then the wings answer right there. Josh Kerr with a huge blast from outside to bring the wings within one with one minute to go. 28 assists on the air for Randy Stats. That's where he's been valuable to this Georgia team. But those two goals here in the fourth quarter have thrown some water on the wings fire. They still have a spark here, though, as they've got a minute to work with. They will have possession. And they need one to tie. Higgins is on the bench for the time being. They'll start the possession, Will Philadelphia, with six players on the field. Here we go. Matt Rambo holding far side for Crowley. Still six men out there for Philadelphia. Rambo to the near side for Reardon. Back to Rambo. Rambo far side. Trying to find a man on the right side. It was a bouncing ball. Vitarelli couldn't settle. And now Higgins comes off the bench. He's got a hurry. Long shot is well wide of the net. Higgins now will get to the ball before he gets to the crease, and he'll throw it back up the field. Wings get possession. They've got a two-on-one. Vitarelli near side, reared in, and a save made by Poulin. What a save oh. by Poulin. Looked like an open net dunk, but Poulin robbed him with the save. And he is pumped up. Looked like the Wings almost had an empty, or the uh, Swarm had an empty netter at the other end, but Higgins got back to make the save, pushing it to the other end. Reardon oh. trying to get a quick stick, but Poulin just reaches and makes the save. Look at him getting there with the stick. What a save. What reaction. And a fist pump from Poulin as he was able to hold on to that one. Georgia called timeout to relieve the pressure. So a tough situation here for Philadelphia, Scott, as Georgia's got the ball and they don't have to shoot. 23.1 left on the clock. Wings have to force a turnover here in order to have a chance. The ball will start in the Georgia defensive end. So the Wings will double the ball. Goal is empty. Six wings on five swarm crowds on their feet here at the wells fargo center as the wings are going to double team lyle thompson in the corner to start this possession thompson with a spin move and finds his way up the lane left side time ticking away empty net for philadelphia pat hits thompson trying to work the ball free they triple team him he falls to the floor able to get the stick on the ball while he's on the floor a soft whistle gives the ball to the Wings, but they only have seven seconds. Time now ticking. Here's Ryan Wagner. They throw it down the floor. Shot is blocked. It bounces out of play. Looked like there might have been time on the clock when that ball went over the glass. Let's wait and see. 
Referee looks like he's sig signaling three seconds. They put point eight back up. Courier's going to have the ball with about a wink of time to shoot. Here's Rambo, stopped by Poulin, and that's going to do it. What a contest here tonight in South Philadelphia. Unfortunately, the Wings come out on the wrong end of it. 12 to 11, Georgia gets the win. As Georgia swarms the man of the hour, Mike Poulin, what saves he made in the waning moments to preserve a win for the Georgia Swarm. You get a look here at that final shot. It was blocked by Jordan McIntosh. It bounced up over the glass. And then Matt Rambo, who's been Mr. Clutch all year long, both for the wings and an outdoor lacrosse. But Poulin comes up with the stop there. And the veteran goaltender able to hold the wings at bay here tonight. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. A thrilling game here tonight at the Wells Fargo Center on college night. Georgia comes away with the nail biter win 12 to 11 over the Philadelphia Wings. And we were very happy to have with us tonight for college night our sideline reporter from Temple University, Brooklyn Vaughn, uh, joining us here this evening on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Brooklyn, you picked a great game to come out with. The only thing we were missing was a Wings win. What was the experience like down there at field level? Yeah, Brian, and even though the Wings lost, hey, what a game that was. Back and forth, both teams all night. But personally for me, I want to thank the Wings and NBC Sports Philadelphia crew for having me as a college student pursuing this industry. You know, you always have a dream of being in this arena, holding this microphone, and it came way sooner than I expected it to. So thank you guys for making this possible. It was a great night. Was there anything that stuck out about the game or about the players that were particularly impressive uh, from down there? And you know what, from down here, it's just such a cool experience to kind of hear their banter on the benches and stuff, you know, um, and the coaches themselves too. I want to give a shout out to the coaches uh, for just being so personable and so easy to talk to. And, uh, you know, they really do a great job of leading their teams. Well, Brooklyn, you did a terrific job. We were very glad to have you, and we uh, look forward to what your career holds for you. Great job, Thank Brooklyn. You so much, Brian. Well done. So again, a thrilling one here tonight at the Wells Fargo Center. Unfortunately, the Georgia Swarm get one more goal and they win it 12 to 11. For Scott Gabrielson, Brooklyn Vaughn, and our entire crew, including our director, Josh, producer Josh Schrager, and our director, Nick Marquetta, I'm Brian Smith. Have a great night, everyone.